Okay, good day. I, this is AP Calculus. I am Mr. McCulley, and this is the presentation for section 4.3, Riemann sums and definite integrals. Okay, so let's get to it. Understand the definition of a Riemann sum, uh, evaluate a definite integral using limits, and evaluate the definite integral using properties of definite integrals. So let's get right to that first goal and talk about Riemann sums. Now, a Riemann sum essentially brings up or breaks up a function on a closed interval into equal parts and approximates the area under the curve. Now, um, let's see here. Let's say, just kind of as an example here, I have this function, we'll call it f of x. One way that I could a approximate the area on the curve under the closed interval from a to b is to draw a bunch of rectangles in here. And so here's a rectangle. And let's say as a for instance, I pick this one and let's make this one just a little bit longer. And then let's make this one really short. And then we can make this one a little bit longer too. Actually, we'll just do four. Now you'll notice I have a bunch of different intervals. And that's allowed, allowable. This is delta x1. This will be delta x2. This is delta x3. And this is delta x4. All right. So I can have different intervals. And again, we know that if I let, or uh, if I make sm smaller sized boxes underneath, I'll get a better approximation because the area under the curve, the error will be less. If I have a bunch that are this small, you'll see I don't have much error here. I don't have a lot of error in here. But the Riemann sum tells me that I can have different values for this delta x. And they're going to call that change delta x. It's delta xi. And so in the next slide here, when they say this delta goes to zero, that means all of those different delta xi's, whatever, which one they have, those all go to zero. And then the f of ci, well, that's just going to be the height. This will be my c1, c2 is this height, c3 is this height, c4 is this height. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Okay. So these are the different heights of the rectangles. These are the different widths of the rectangles. And if we let all of those widths go to zero and we sum up all of those areas of all those rectangles, we have the, the definite integral. And so this is our, again, the integration symbol. This little a is my lower limit of integration and this little b is the upper limit of integration so to a few properties um if you're if you oh, well, i suppose let's say if i want to take the integral of f of x dx with no width well if it has no width if the closed interval is from a to a it'll have no width and therefore no area so it would be zero provided that it's defined and so there's some instances where that wouldn't be true. If the function was undefined at A, then obviously it wouldn't be zero. And then uh, another one, if a function is integrable on A to B, then the value of the integral from B to A would be negative f of x. And then if you have, then this is kind of a constant multiple rule. If you have a constant times a function, you can bring that constant out and then do the integral of just the function. And then if you have the sum of two functions over an interval from A to B, then you can take each of those, uh, the integral of each of those functions over A to B separately and then add those together. And then a little note here, continuity implies in integrability, which is very good. Okay, so let's see here. And we are moving on. So additive integral property. And so basically, this is something that happens uh, from time to time, especially if you have a function that crosses 
the x-axis and we're trying to find the area between the curve and the x-axis what what happens is is that if you have a closed interval from a to b and here's our closed interval from a to b and i have some point c then this entire integral is also equal to the integral of that function from a to c meaning this portion of the curve right here this area here plus the integral from b to c of f of x meaning this portion of the curve which we've done before the area of any region is the sum of the areas of its individual parts so that's really all the new stuff let's get into solving some problems here um, I'm looking on page 276 number 14 let's read the directions here 276 says actually it's 278 sorry number 14 says set up the indef the definite integral that yields the area of the region you do not have to evaluate that function so this function is defined on x so we're on the x-axis and our function is the y values so our integral for this one the integral is going to be if I'm talking about this pink area here from 0 to 2 of 6 minus 3x dx and that is my um, the value of the integral there we go it's done okay next doing this one now notice this function is defined in y so this is this y this horizontal axis is my independent variable whereas the x would then be the dependent variable this is the f of y uh, function right here so this one since it's uh, y minus 2 quantity squared over this interval the definite integral is going to be f let's see you're going to go from 0 to 2 we're going from 0 to 2 of y minus 2 quantity squared dy that's it now do they want me to set that one up nope they just want me to set it up and evaluate it so that's all i didn't have to evaluate that one so we can move on okay look on page 279 example number 26 they want me to let's see they say sketch the region whose area is given by this definite integral and then use a geometric formula to evaluate the integral so if I look at this thing this function here is x over 2 so let's real quickly here and from 0 to 4 so 1 2 3 4 there's 4 on my x-axis and 1 2 3 4 uh, 5 I guess that's all I need Nah, I shouldn't need much. 5 on my y-axis. This is a linear function. When I plug in 0, I get 0 out. It's actually direct variation. When I plug in 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I have that area. And so they want me just to figure out that area. There we go. So we got that. And so it says, sketch the region whose area is given by the definite integral. Use geometric formula to evaluate this integral. So this integral here, this is a triangle. So I can figure that out. That's going to be the same as a half base times height. And so in this case, I have a base of 4 and I have a height of 2. So half of 4 is 2 times 2 is 4 units squared boom done all right moving on they want me to in this particular one just evaluate the definite integral using um they just want me to evaluate that definite integral now this is a constant so i'm going to move the constant onto the other side and say this is a equal to the integral from let's see here equal to the integral from 2 to 4 of just dx with my 25 out front now the integral of um, just dx is 25 uh, let's do it right here is 25 times x evaluated from 2 to 4 which would be 25 times 4 minus 25 times 2 so 100 minus 50 is 50 same thing here 
I can inter integrate each of these individually. So this integral is going to be, well, let's see if we can do this. It'll be x to the 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 and then plus 4x, and this is going to be evaluated from 2 to 4. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing some um, a, uh, simplification, but it ends up being 1 fourth of, uh, let's see here, it'll be 4 to the fourth, 1 fourth, that's a 4, um, 4 to the fourth plus 4 times 4, and then subtract from that, let's see here, it'll be 1 fourth of 2 to the fourth minus 4 times 2. And let's see here, this is, let's see here, if I cancel out, I get 4 to the third, 4 squared is 16 times 4 is 64 plus 4 times 4 is 16 more. And then 2 to the 4th, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, divided by 4 is uh, 4, and then minus 4 times 2 is 8. So let's see here, 64, 64 and 16 will be 80, and then this will be minus 4, so a negative, uh, negative 4 gives me... 84. So unless I made an error in my arithmetic, I think that is going to be my area for, or at least my definite integral. All right, let's talk about this one. And this one is kind of a groovy particular function. And um, I just wanted to see where I got that from. I thought I had put it up as a, I had a, um, had that as an example. I had a number. Oh well, we can still do it, no problem. The reason I picked this one is because if I want to talk about this function, remember the absolute value function is a um, is v, and because it's negative, it would be flipped upside down, and because of the a, it would be moved up a unit. So this particular function would look like this. And so I have a here, I have negative a here, I have a here. So this integral would like to essentially find the area under this curve right here. Okay, not too bad. Well, the problem with this is that it's really two parts. All right, this function here is really the function, and I suppose I should... Uh, separate it, let's get the right tool. This function is going to be equal to the integral from negative a to zero of what's gonna end up being um, a plus x dx. And so we've got a slope of one and then it goes through a. And so negative a makes it zero, positive and zero makes it a. So that's our first one. And then we have to separate it into the second part and that'll go from zero to two. And then this has a negative slope, but a is its, so it'll be a minus x and then it'll be dx again. And so doing these integrals separately, I'm going to have um, it'll be ax plus a half x squared, and this integral needs to be evaluated from negative a to zero, plus, again, it's going to be ax uh, minus half x squared, and this inter and uh, this will be have to be evaluated from zero to two. All right, so zero makes all of these zero, so I've got a zero makes this one and that one zero. And then that would be minus, well, I'd have to plug in negative a. So I'll have negative a squared plus um, what ends up being half a squared. And then this one, I can evaluate it at two. Uh, why, how do I get a two there? That's crazy. 
I, I'm sh sure you're screaming. Why? Why is McCully putting in twos? What the heck was he thinking? Obviously, this interval should go from zero to A. Sorry about that. All right, so I've got A times A is A squared, and then it'll be minus a half, and then it'll be A squared. And then the next one is just um, zero. That'd be minus, because when I plug in zero for all of those, I'll get zero. That looks good. And so let's see here. A, negative A squared plus a half A squared is going to be negative. So I get a negative a half, so I'll be a plus one half A squared. And then uh, A squared minus half A squared is going to be another half A squared, which gives me just A squared. That's that area. That makes sense. Um, these two lengths are the same. These two lengths are the same. If I took this triangle and kind of flipped it over, I'd have a square of length A by A. So that makes good sense. I'm happy with that. Another one I'd like to talk about is this one here. And I have, so this one is a function that is not defined by any equation. I'm just giving you a picture. And I want you to evaluate these particular integrals. Well, this first integral right here is from 0 to 2. So we are essentially talking about this area here. And so I can just figure that this is a, a right angle. This is a horizontal line. So this area is going to be um, 2 times 2, because it's the area of this rectangle, equaling to 4. So that's going to be that one. The next interval says from 2 to 3. Well, from 2 to 3, I have a, um, looks like a trapezoid here. And so it has a width of 1, it has a base base 1 of 2, base 2 of, um, of 3. So I can use a trapezoid formula. Half the base is 1, and then plus base 1 was 2, base 2 is 3. And so I get uh, half times 1 is a half, and then a half times 5 is 5 halves. And that's just this area here. It's not the total area because we're only talking about this little interval here. All right. And then from 2 to 6. Well, 2 to 6, 2 to 6 is the interval that we've already found. So this is equal to the integral from 2 to 3 of f of x dx plus the integral from 3 to 6 of f of x dx. Now, if I look... I already know, let's extend the page, I already know what this one's worth because I figured it out up here. It's 5 over 2. From 3 to 6 is this triangle right here. Well, it has a base of 3. It has a height of 3. So I can replace this particular integral with another triangle formula. So a half times 3 times 3, which will be equal to 5 halves plus 9 halves, which will be 14 halves or 7. So this area right here is going to be 7 units. I suppose I should do it squared. Well, that's all I got, folks. Let's see. We did okay. 18 minutes. That's not too bad. But the Star Wars fun fact of the day. How much money has Star Wars, the Star Wars brand generated since it came out in 1975? This includes books, movies, toys, TV, VHS, DVD, VOD, and other merchandise sales. It is a staggering $30.2 billion. And um, since I'll probably reuse this, if you want to check how much the new movie this year added to it, if you follow this link, you can see how much additional revenue since I've used this, um, since I made this video. Well, I will see you all in class. Have a great day. Goodbye.